Okay, everybody that out there on YouTube land, I thought I'd get on here and do a little discussion about the benchmarks that came out for the Ryzen CPUs to today and go over my thoughts on Ryzen and, and uh, what AMD did or is trying to do. If you're a gamer and all you want to do is play games, you're probably better off with just uh, i7, 7700K or even an i5. But at least for now unless you want to stream like if you want to if you want to get on twitch and do streaming and live stream games like i don't play a whole lot of games you know i play battlefield uh i played battlefield one beta it was okay i played a lot of battlefield three and battlefield four i played a, quite a bit of that but i don't really have a whole lot of time now since moving to florida i end up spending more time out fishing and and doing other stuff than playing games i like to play games and i'm looking forward to um playing quake champions so i'm an old school quake player kind of type of player if i do play it'll be like a game like quake champions that's the that's i'm looking forward to, to quake champions and who knows i might twitch live stream some of it or something like that so if you have an inclination where you think well hey you know I should do a live stream and do like a webcam with my video and have a live stream. If you try to do that on a four core, eight thread processor, you're going to run into problems. They even recommend that you have a separate system for streaming. Now that's one spot where you're like, okay, well maybe the Ryzen would be better for that type of situation. And even in the regular gaming situation, even in all the reviews that I've seen so far, like even if the 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 Ryzen's never got like low frames they all did good the 1700 and 1700k even did very well at 3.8 gigahertz or whatever the heck the gigahertz was they did very well in the games it's not like they were getting 40 frames per second they were getting 100 frames per second 120 frames per second and then the 7700k was getting like 140 so what it's getting 20 frames per second more past 120 frames per second it's not like it's it's getting the it's not like the 7700k is getting 60 frames and the 1700k the, the 1700 um x is getting is getting 40 frames or 30 frames like it's having a hard time keeping it's playing the games just fine my phone's going off like crazy somebody's sending me messages on instagram ignore my phone it's going nuts anyway so my point is, is if you're a gamer and you want to use Twitch or you don't, you don't really need the absolute fastest frames per second higher than what you are even looking at on the screen, then it would probably be good for you. Also, AMD has this thing like even they call it fine wine where within time they improve stuff. So, you know, who knows, maybe in, in two or three months with a couple couple um updates to the bios and drivers or whatever some updates it'll get better but if you're a content creator like i am if you edit video if you edit photos and video especially if you do any kind of video encoding like my other video you can watch in my thing from just a reason why i said the i made a video the other day saying the reason why i'm upgrading to ryzen is because I encode a lot and it takes a lot of, of horsepower to encode multi-threaded. So it, it packs the thread. I've got a six core 12 thread CP, Intel CPU in here now and it goes 100% for hours encoding. So if I can reduce that time, if I can make that time a whole lot less, then I'm thrilled. If I can reduce that time, because that's what most of my time is taken up on the PC is encoding video. If I can reduce that time quite a bit, that'll leave more time for me to play games. So then I can actually do some gaming when I'm when I have a chance while I'm sitting at the computer. So for me, it's either game or not game. Either encode video and not be able to game, or encode video and still have time to play some, you know, play a, a quick match of Quake or Battlefield or something like that and have a good time. For me, that's it's it's this per processor is like in the perfect position for me. It gives me just enough of both. It gives me better performance than most of the Intel's offerings at the same 
area. The multi-thread, multi-core processing is through the roof on the Ryzen's. So, and the single core performance is still pretty good. So it's good enough. It's probably got much better single core performance than my i7-970, which is like three years old. So I was going to upgrade anyway this year because I, I go a couple years and then upgrade. And the other thing is the couple year thing. I always upgrade after just a few years. So in a couple years, I'll upgrade and I upgrade every few years. So if my processor can last me for six years, that's fantastic. I noticed that the Intel processor seems to last because I got a six core 12 thread processor. It's lasted me five years now and it's been really good and it still works. I'm actually, this case behind me is granddaughter. And this, I'm going to, I'm going to take my system. I picked this case up the other day and I'm going to take my system out, my Intel system out and put it in that case for her. So she gets a, she gets a, uh, she gets my next gen, my i7-970 with 24 gigs of RAM. She gets that system. So she won't get the video card. I'm going to take the video card out. But even look, look at my video card. It's a, it's a GTX 760. It's not like I'm a massive gamer. It's a 760. It's like several generations old. And it's perfectly fine for me. It is a little slow in the newer games. I noticed I get some frame drops and chopping. So if I can, the bigger improvement for gaming, I think, even no matter which processor you got, is a better video card. So if you get the 1080 or if you get the 1070, heck, a 1060 would probably smoke this card. So that's what I'm looking to do is get the get my processing power down where I can I can encode very fast, get my encoding speeds down, get my processing time down to a reasonable level, and then upgrade the video card where I can also game. Encoding is number one, gaming is number two for me. And that's just, that's my business. This is what I do for a living. So for me, it makes more sense to have something that will do what I need to do as fast as possible that helps helps me get my work done faster so that I have more time for gaming. If you're a diehard gamer and you're not planning on doing like Twitch or live streaming or any editing and video or anything like that, go for the i7-7700 or even an i5. You know, the funny thing is, is before these reviews came out, I noticed that the, the biggest, most gamers would tell you, all you need is an i5. All you need is an i5. Everybody was saying all you needed was an i5 for gaming. And they were right. But as soon as Ryzen comes out and it's competing with the i7 and the i5, some even the i5 was beating it in some games. As soon as that comes out, people are like, oh, it's a loser. It's not doing as well. I'm like, wait, I thought all you needed was an i5. Now you're saying you need the i7-7700K because it's beating the Ryzen. doesn't make it in single core performance for games. So... It's the Ryzen's right up there with the i5 for games. You you were just saying that all you needed was an i5. So what difference does it make in single core performance if it's neither one of those chips will beat it in multi core? So AMD beats the Intel's 77 the four the quad core eight thread CPUs. The Ryzen beats them. It smokes them in multi core performance like by a ton, not by a little, like by double. So. You gain a lot by having that. You gain all those extra threads and cores for more processing power if you're doing other stuff than gaming. But if all you're doing is gaming, pick up an i5. If that's all you planned on doing, get an i5. But if you're looking to upgrade and get a new computer, if you're looking to upgrade your system, you're like, hey, I want to upgrade. At least, okay, so the i5 gives you 100, and 100 frames per second. The i7-7700 gives you 140 frames per second. So you gain 40 frames per second. And that's it. Okay. But with the Ryzen, you gain some frames per second. And you're able to edit and encode video and stuff a lot quicker. So when you get ready to upload your YouTube videos with your gaming content or whatever, and you want to edit them, it's much quicker. So you gain quite a bit more with the Ryzen because you've got eight threads and sixteen or eight uh, sixteen threads and eight cores. So for me, that makes more sense. That's a that's a better buy for me, for me personally. For you, it might not be. For you, you might be fine with the i5. Get an i5 if that's all you need. You know. 
anyway, that's my thoughts on it. I thought I'd let you know. My processor hasn't sh hasn't arrived yet, obviously, because I pre-ordered it, but it'll probably be here, you know, this weekend or next week or something. I don't know, whenever they ship it. I haven't even seen a shipment confirmation. Even though I pre-ordered it, I haven't seen a shipment confirmation from Amazon yet. So we'll see. That's my granddaughter now. She's calling me. <laughs> She's probably calling me say, you got my computer built yet? No, I don't have it. I told you it would be a little while. Anyway, so I got to go. Um, peace out, YouTube. Keep, keep watching for the reviews, more reviews and more stuff, and you'll see more things. All right? See ya.